Well, good morning, everyone here at Trinity Church, and good morning at home. Great to have you here for uh, this uh, worship service. Today is uh, the day the Lord has made, the final Sunday of April, and it's hard to believe that uh, May is right around the corner, uh, but I look forward to each day the Lord gives us. Well, would you stand if you're able? For our call to worship, and at home, if you could participate with us in a responsive call to worship, that would be awesome. Let's join together. Lord God of heaven and earth, you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hands. Consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. You have redeemed us from the pit and set our feet upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your mighty name forever and ever. Come, O sovereign Lord, and bear your mighty arm among us. Grant us faith and trust in you as our God, whose power is great and whose steadfast love endures forever. Draw near to us, O Lord, as we draw near to you in humility and in faith. For we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Well, we're not quite ready to go and shake one another's hands, but let's at least wave to those around us and acknowledge those sharing the love of Jesus with those that at home do the same, if you will, and then be seated. <laughs> Well, let's join together in our pastoral prayer, and then we'll move into the Lord's Prayer after that. Um, next week, we've got an exciting uh, time with the, uh, the Love Project, so we'll have one service at 8 o'clock. We'll be outside, Lord willing, and then we'll, it'll be an abbreviated service, probably 8 to 8.45-ish, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, we'll have a homily, which means a short sermon, all right? So uh, you'll believe it when you see it, right? From David Smith, well, it's possible. With God, all things are possible. So next week, we'll have that outside at 8, and then around 9 o'clock, we'll have a big bagel brunch outside, and uh, it'll be served safely. We can enjoy. We'll sit together in our groups, our proje project groups, so if you have not signed up yet for a love project, please do so. Um, and the details are in rooted together on how you can sign up for that. And we have a number of projects that still could use some additional help. Uh, we need, need some help in writing letters to the prisoners. And uh, uh, Project 8 that I'm leading, I'm looking for some more men and women and kids uh, to help out with an uh, outdoor type of thing next to the post office uh, and we have others that are listed there in your newsletter as well. well let's pray heavenly father as we gather here um, on this lord's day we thank you thank you so much for trinity church and thank you for all the people of this community of believers and we thank you for how you're growing this body and adding a new uh, people to our church week by week and we ask that you continue to grow us together we thank you lord for the exciting news that the infection rates are going down and the vaccines are working and uh, the infection rate here in massachusetts in particular is is really going in a great direction and so lord as we see more people feel comfortable to come back to face-to-face -face worship we pray, Lord, that you would uh, open our hearts uh, to one another and welcome them back with open arms. 
And we pray that you would continue to, uh, to build this uh, face-to-face worship and also to build our online worship experiences for those not, not yet ready to attend. We do pray for uh, next week's uh, special uh, love project for we thank you we can reach out to our community with the love of Jesus Christ in a very tangible way uh, and we pray you bless these uh, community projects we pray you would raise up additional people uh, to roll up their sleeves and to serve whether it's writing letters to prisoners or putting together blessing bags for the homeless whether it is bringing in furniture uh, to care for people uh, through that initiative, uh, Lord, whether it's cutting and splitting wood or a, a number of other kinds of projects, Father, helping out with uh, several farms in the area, uh, blessing, uh, blessing there. Uh, and we pray, Father, that you would bless our day. May it be an awesome, glorious day. And we pray your blessing upon the weather, that it be favorable, that we can be out and about uh, serving uh, next week. Lord, as we pray, we are mindful of a number of folks that are going through some times of uh, deep grief and sorrow and testing. We do uh, pray for Diane Hayes in the recent uh, death of her sister, uh, Charlotte. We pray that you would be with Diane as uh, she grieves the passing of her sister and also Marilyn as she grieves the passing of her uh, her daughter, Marilyn Hansen. And Father, we, we want to pray for Jane to pray and her mom, Jessie. Lord, pour out your grace upon Jessie and strengthen her and help her as she goes through treatment. We pray for your mighty, powerful hand to be upon her life in, uh, uh, in healing and strengthening and empowering. We do want to pray for Kathy Simmons as well as her mom Flo is is uh, near to the end of her earthly pilgrimage soon to come face to face before you and we pray for Kathy and for her mom Flo Lord that you would uh, you would uh, bring her home to be with you in your timing pray for your mercy and your grace and for your special comfort of the spirit upon uh, Kathy and Drew Father, we, we want to continue to pray for a prayer of thanks that Katie, Katie Trailer is with us today, and she's getting stronger day by day, and thank you for being with her during her procedure. And Father, for others going through medical procedures and, and facing all kinds of situations, hear our prayer, O Lord, for them. There is further, as we pray together, the Lord's Prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we're going to have special music now by Samantha Gray. And following that, Amy Milne will come up and share a ministry moment for the Mom to Mom ministry. Good morning. I will be singing today a song called Hosanna. And I'm pretty sure it will be familiar to you, so I hope that you'll sing with me and that it will be a blessing to you.
shall stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is a generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God of Jacob. And who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in heaven. talk to you about mom to mom mom to mom is a program intended to strengthen and encourage women of all ages in their roles as mothers and grandmothers through biblically based teaching this Thursday April 29th we will resume meeting outdoors from 10 to 11:30 on the outside front lawn of Trinity Church the talk will also be live streamed on Trinity's Facebook page and recordings will be made available since this week's topic is relevant for everyone. Brian Henderson, a licensed Christian marriage and family therapist and a mental health counselor will be speaking on facing anxiety and fear in uncertain times. Please bring a chair or blanket to sit on. Childcare is not available at this time, so um, bring toys or coloring for babies or young children to do with you on the blanket. Um, and please sign up ahead of time using the links in Trinity's website so we know how many people to expect. Thank you. morning. Join me in the reading of God's word during our service today. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14. Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. 
I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and that I have done it, declares the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 28. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 28, 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And our New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy and inspired word. Uh, today our message is from uh, text is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, looking at the first five verses, 1 through 5, and it's our fifth message in the series from the book of Corinthians. Today's message is entitled, The Power of God for All Who Believe. Let's pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for the scripture that has been breathed out by the Holy Spirit. We thank you for all of the Bible, and we thank you, Lord, in particular today for this passage before us from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Open up the truth of your word uh, to show us how then shall we live in in our lives as overcomers that we would be salt and light in the world and that we would be men and women of of prayer and action 
and trusting in your great and awesome power. Bless now the, this message to the glory of your name we pray. Amen. I got a question for you. What comes to your mind when I say the power of God? You can answer out loud. What comes to your mind when I say the power of God? Well, perhaps it's a, it's a violent thunderstorm. Maybe it's a dramatic healing or deliverance from uh, drugs or alcohol or something of that nature. Perhaps it comes to you about the Red Sea and God parting the Red Sea when you think of the power of God. Well, how would you describe the power of God to somebody else? What would you do? How would you begin to describe it? Well, if you're a Christian and you uh, take in God's word, the Bible, as his truth, you would probably go to Scripture to say some things like this. The power of God is described as great from Psalm 79. He's a mighty God. The power of God is strong, Psalm 89. His arm is endued with power. For the power of God is glorious, from Isaiah 63, where it speaks about the power of God uh, at Moses' right hand. Or perhaps you'd go to the book of Romans and say the power of God is everlasting. Romans 1, his eternal power has been seen since creation so that man is without excuse. Or maybe you would say the power of God is incomparable. Deuteronomy 3, or in the words of Jesus, with God all things are possible, can accomplish anything. The power of God. Well, what would you say to the question, how has the power of God been revealed? How has it been made known? Well, we see from Psalm 102 that in creation, the power of God is clearly seen. The miracles of Jesus uh, that we heard about in Mark 1, uh, read earlier today, speaks about the miracles of, of, of Christ, or the power of God revealed in miracles of healing today. Psalm 103, he heals us from all our diseases. Or the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to others uh, through boldness from Acts 1.8. The power of the Holy Spirit to bring forth life from death. Ezekiel 37, the raising up of these dry bones, or the strengthening of believers. We see it in Ephesians 6, when we pray, Lord, give them strength. May your power help them. And then suddenly we see the strength of God come into someone's life as we pray for them. Or we see the power of God manifested through the cross of Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.18, the resurrection of Christ and the work of the gospel. Uh, that brings salvation to all who believe. Well, the Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans 1.16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Today, as we continue in our exposition to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we read these words of the Apostle Paul which speak directly towards the, the power of God saying this, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstration of the Spirit's power. So your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Now here's the big idea. Some of you say, just give me the sermon in a nutshell, or just give me the big picture. Uh, I want to hear the single idea. Here it is. As we see how the Lord is calling us to live out our Christian faith in the world, it's critical that we learn from the mistakes of the church in the past by wisely placing our faith not in the frailty of human wisdom, but rather in the strong and glorious and transforming power of God. The mistake that the church at Corinth made of the first century has been repeated throughout history. Sometimes we don't learn from our mistakes. Sometimes we don't learn from other people's mistakes. 
<laughs> Sometimes the church keeps making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And that's part of the reason why we study the Bible, to learn from the mistakes made of the past, to say, Lord, help us to live our lives differently. The mistake that the believers met in the church at Corinth uh, is the same mantra of much of present-day counseling and pop psychology, which says, within you is the power, or the power is within you. The answer is to look within. The answer to life is found within you. Uh, the power to overcome is within you, and popular books direct people inward. Some years ago, um, I saw a book on my mom's shelf um, growing up. My mom read very uh, widely, she still does today, and a lot of kinds of material. And I saw this very strange looking man with long hair and uh, of Indian descent. And uh, it, was a, it was about uh, yoga. And the man's name is Paramahansa Yoga Nanda. And I'm sure I butchered this guy's name pretty bad, but I uh, did my best here. A Hindu monk that introduced to millions the teaching of meditation and self-realization and yoga in the West in the 50s and the 60s. And this is, this is what uh, he said, and it, and it echoes the same ancient uh, focus on wisdom. Realize that enough hidden strength lies within you to overcome all obstacles and temptations. Bring forth that indomitable power and energy. In other words, within you is the power, the energy, and it's all about focusing inward instead of focusing outward to God himself. Well, the life of the Christ follower is to take a very different trajectory instead of just coming within. Looking instead, uh, looking instead of just deep within one's own mind and heart and putting our faith in ourself as the master of our own destiny uh, and the source of life-giving power to overcome all obstacles, the Apostle Paul says by the Holy Spirit, uh, this, these words and the words I share with you today, let not your faith rest in human wisdom, but on God's power. Rest in God's power instead of your human wisdom. This world-changing shift takes place when we bow the knee and accept uh, Christ as Lord and Savior and receive salvation from our sins. It changes the way we face all manner of obstacles in life, from marital issues to child-rearing decisions, solving problems at work, getting victory over substance abuse, uh, facing financial shortfalls, health issues, and on and on, you see. As a Christ follower, we face things differently. God says through the prophet Jeremiah many years ago, I am the Lord, the God of, the li of all living things. Is anything too hard for me? Now, that's the question. Is anything too hard for God? You can answer out loud if you want or quietly behind your face mask. All right? Is anything too hard for God? God's power can accomplish anything. It's a solid place that we can rest our faith. We have seen thus far in 1 Corinthians that Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God given to us and to all who believe. And here in 1 Corinthians 2, Paul continues to expand on this spiritual reality, saying this, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and great fear and trembling. Now imagine if you put that on your resume. All right? Now, how are you a public speaking? Well, not too good. Kind of trembly, kind of great fear. I'm not very eloquent. I stumble over my words a lot. Would you hire me? We'll let you know, all right? Imagine now, here he is, and he's, he's very transparent before them and saying, listen, you know, I'm not the most eloquent guy out there. I don't have a silver tongue. But nevertheless, 
this is who I am. I, I came, but what I did preach, I preached Christ. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul says to the troubled and divided church in Corinth that he founded when he came to them several years ago, he resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The cross of Christ to those who are lost and perishing in their sins is foolishness. But Paul affirms to all who are being saved, it's what? It's the power of God. The power of God is not found in human wisdom and those gifted, eloquent orators like the Greeks love. God's power is brought to life in our lives through the simple preaching of the cross of Christ. And so in the message of the cross of Christ, God destroys the wisdom of the wise. He frustrates the intelligent of the, of the intelligent. For Christ crucified was a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. It was offensive, offensive to their pride and self-sufficiency and their, their claims to be a self-made person, their claim to excellence. I'm an excellent person. Look at the work of my hands. It says, oh, well. Paul says when he came preaching to the people at Corinth, he came not in these ways of eloquence, a speech, and human wisdom, but great trembling. Why? So their faith would not be in the human messenger, but their faith would be in the Spirit's power, the power of God unleashed in their lives, unleashing them from chains of darkness and lostness and places of deadness to sin. So now when we see Paul saying about this weakness and great trembling, he's not simply being self-deprecating, all right? Sometimes we, we, we are that way because we want to be modest or we want to be humble. Well, that's not what's going on here. It's not appearing to be modest. He's stating a well-known fact. For later in 2 Corinthians 10, 10, he affirms once again this assessment of his weakness. And he says this, For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he's unimpressive. His speaking amounts to nothing. Now put that on your resume. People say I'm unimpressive. And I agree with him. I am unimpressive. And my speaking amounts to nothing. Nevertheless, I think I'm the man for the job or I'm the woman for the job. Well, what he's saying here it seems very unusual to our, our ears as we're, we're always trying to put our best foot forward and, and trying to, you know, build ourselves up and, and finding the answer within. And here's a very different trajectory, saying, no, the answer is not within. It's, it's outside of yourself. It's in the person of Christ. It's, it's go, going to God. When he was in Corinth, the Lord appeared to Paul, reassuring Paul in Acts 18.9, and we'll put that scripture up on your screens at home and here at the church. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, Paul. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. I'm with you. And no one is to going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. And so Paul was facing trembling and, and, and fear. Some of it was of persecution uh, because, you know, imagine going from one, one uh, city to the next where they stone you in one place and they run you out in, in, in the next place and, and beat you with rods in another place. And so he was facing some real hard times. We think of hard times we're in. It's nothing compared to what, what Paul went through for sure. But through it all, his initial tremblings and constant persecutions and opposition was overcome by the power of Christ in his life. And so he persevered and he continued. John MacArthur says that for Paul, his fear was not of men, but primarily out of anxious desire to do his duty before God. And I agree with him. There's that There's that anxious desire. I have to preach the whole counsel of God. I have to do everything God's called me to do. And you know, any Christian uh, of any kind of state, we want to do God's will. We want to do a good job. We want to honor him. And so there's that, that healthy fear and trembling that we don't mess up and we don't do a, a terrible job. And that's, that's true. But I also think there's a human uh, area, area here of weakness, perhaps, uh, perhaps the way he looked, uh, perhaps the way he spoke, 
Um, he probably didn't speak with great power and authority. He may have had a high squeaky voice. He may have been short in stature that people may laugh at because of that. It may have a, a number of features about him that were not particularly handsome. Uh, but he says, you know, it's, all, it's not about me anyway. My preaching may not be with wise and persuasive words, but so it's a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom but on God's power. So Paul makes clear here he was only God's clay vessel through which his power was used to rescue them from the state of total depravity and eternal lostness. His power was extended to them in life, giving them uh, life-giving ways through this weak and unimpressive servant. Uh, well, that, that gives me hope. When you, you know, you say, well, I'm not that special. Maybe you think, well, sorry, David, but I am special. And you say, well, okay, that's great. But the fact is, here Paul says, it's a, it's a, it's a Greek uh, phrase, a hint statement uh, for all of those nerds out there that like those kind of things. I know we've got some of you. All right, Mark smiling behind his, his, his mask because he's one of those. This hint of statement which, which denotes purpose. And so that your faith may not rest on the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. In other words, Paul preached to them the gospel of Jesus Christ in a simple, unpretentious way, a spirit-empowered way to demonstrate the power of God. The power of God through this uh, imperfect human vessel. Well, Paul's preaching was so much more than a speech or edifying discourse filled with strung together like uh, strings of pearls. The preaching of the Apostle Paul to them was God's holy word given to them with all the conviction and all the power and all the authority of the Holy Spirit. It was the very testimony of God preaching a clear message of the efficacy of the cross, bringing them to salvation, to repent of their sins, put their faith in Christ who died for them. And so by the grace of God, the sin of the sinner was imputed to Christ, and Christ's righteousness was imputed to the sinner. God's power given to them unto salvation to all who believe. All throughout Scripture, there is this direct linkage between or union between the power of God and the faith of man or woman. There's this linkage together. Jesus says in Matthew 17, 20, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So there's this, this faith and then there's the power of God and then something happens. Jesus said in John 14, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. They will even do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And so here, again, the great works of God, the power of God, our faith, the promise of Jesus, something extraordinary, life-changing is going to happen. Mark 9, Jesus addresses the man of the faith with a demon-possessed son. Man says to Jesus, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. He's not sure if he can do anything. Jesus replies, if you can, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Maybe that's where you're at. I do believe, but I still have unbelief in this situation. Help me overcome that unbelief. That's an honest prayer, isn't it? I believe, but yet there's still some unbelief here. Help me to deal with that unbelief. Help me to trust in you, to trust in your power, that, and I will ask. Now, the Greek word here for power is the word dunamis, where we get the word what? I heard it. Say it louder. Dynamite. 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 Right. You know, and other words as well. But this power, this dunamis, is the power of God. Well, Paul's redirecting the divided church with their love affair and enamorment with the sophistry of human wisdom to put their faith, rather, instead of that, to the power of God. Paul says in Ephesians 1, 
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which uh, he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead, seating him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above the rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So Paul's desire, people of Christ's church, will know and experience the power of God in their lives. Is the same power God used to raise Christ from the dead. Does that blow your minds? A little bit, perhaps, all right? The same power that God used to raise Christ from the dead, he says, that's my power. Praying that we would know that power, that life-giving power. The power, you see, is for the church, for those who believe in Christ. The power is the power of the Holy Spirit, alive in the disciples of Christ. Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended these words, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In our sermon in two weeks, as we continue uh, in two weeks on 1 Corinthians 2, we'll look at verses 6 through 16. We'll dive down deeper into the person and the works of the Holy Spirit. We'll see that God's wisdom is not only revealed by the Holy Spirit, we'll see how the Holy Spirit opens our hearts and our minds to the truth of God, and how the Holy Spirit, uh, God has given us the mind of Christ. And what does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Uh, as we reflect upon the power of God and, and how that power is available to us, I want to ask you a question. It's the same question that God asked Abraham in Genesis 18. Are you ready for it? Let's reveal that question. It's coming. I think. There it is. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything? I think we misspelled too wrong. I think it's too... T O O. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. All right. English is my second language. Well, it's not actually, but. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? There isn't. The very God who spoke the universe into existence, the very God who parted the Red Sea and led Israel safely through that Red Sea to the other side. The same God who spoke to the prophet Ezekiel, speak to the dry bones in the valley. Prophesy to these dry bones, and they'll come together with a great rattling sound, and skin and tendons will appear on the bones. And Ezekiel prophesied the breath of God came into this vast army. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Who in Jesus Christ taught people with the authority of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, to cast out an impure spirit in a possessed man in the synagogue. And the scripture says this evil spirit came out with a shriek. Imagine now the power of God. God's power is, a, is able to overcome man's sinful total depravity and give us life-giving, life everlasting God's power is able to deliver us from death and lostness, from the strongholds of false religion and our own selfish pride. May your faith, may your faith rest not in your intellect, in your own human wisdom, but may it rest in God's great power. The power is seen in many places, especially in, in raising you from a place of being dead in your sins to being alive in Christ. Ephesians 2, 1 to 2 has this powerful scripture that says that you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of the world, think about that dry bones now, all right? It's not very flattering to think of ourselves in that way that we were dead in our sins. 
But that's what Scripture says. You were dead in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. And as the Apostle Paul says, I trust you will affirm in your own life, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. May you put your faith in Christ who died for you. And trust not in the wisdom of the age, but in the awesome power of God who brings salvation to everyone who believes. Let's stand for prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this word today from uh, the book of 1 Corinthians. And thank you for breathing it out through uh, your servant Paul and Thank you, Lord, for uh, the wonderful news that, about your awesome, glorious power. May we know that power personally, and may we believe in that power for the lives of our friends and family members, that you would do mighty works exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we could ask or think, works of salvation, works of change and marriage, marriages that are on shaky ground, changes in finances going from a place of a bankruptcy to places of, 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 of financial wealth and, and security to be able to not only give generously to uh, the work of your kingdom, but to help people all around us. Father, we pray that we would trust in you, in your mighty power, and in your word. And we thank you, Lord, for, uh, for this word for us today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we sing these next songs, um, just sing it with all your heart to the Lord. And if you would like prayer for anything, maybe you say, you know, I, I want God's power to be at work and in, in my son's life, my, my, uh, you know, my life, my situation at work, I need, someone needs healing, I just need to see God's power work. I'd be happy to pray with you. Uh, uh, you and Milne, one of our elders, so come on down, you and he'll be here, and he'll pray with you as well. And if we have more than, than a few, well, we'll grab some others from the, from the church to pray as well.
of you who are in Jesus Christ, those of you that are saved, that have bowed the knee and asked Christ to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior. You are born of the Spirit. This verse, 
says it all. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. To know that your sins are forgiven, to be rescued from this place of darkness. That's the power of God. That's the power of God that he has done that for you through the person of Jesus Christ. We stand in awe of his power. Wow, he did that for me. Well, perhaps there are other things in your life that you want to see God's power working in also. Healing of marriages or situation uh, in, in a work problem, um, maybe a, an addiction to food or uh, some kind of eating disorder of some sort. Perhaps there's other things that you say, you know, I want God's power. I need it. Because I've looked inside, 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 and the answers just aren't there. I need to look outside of myself to God. You and I would be happy to pray with you for whatever those issues are, and we'll keep it very confidential. But we'll just join you together for prayer if you would like that. If you like that, just come up and see us afterwards. Now receive the benediction. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond whatever we ask or imagine. Unto him be glory now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. So next week we'll see you, Lord willing, outside. Bring a chair, comfortable clothing, and then uh, we'll have that to look forward to. Go in peace. So I have some oil.